Blinking lights. A geek sign for hack me, hack me. <laughs> this is just my little home computer lab. Uh, I use it for testing and um, you know if you want to try to hack into it you've got a choice of basically three different operating systems. Let's turn on the lights and have the people criticize. Damn, why are there so many? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, in a perfect world, I'd have just one that was virtualizing Solaris, obviously, Windows, that's the big one, and Linux. But um, I'm not here that often at this house. I can't risk multi-booting, and it's old hardware. I can't afford a, a system powerful enough to virtualize all these different things talking to each other at the same time. So there you have it. Number one, I'm also easily bored. So why not just work on computers? So this is going to be a trip down nostalgia lane because all these systems are about a decade old. Let's start with the oldest. Down here at the bottom. Oh, let's get a good view. IBM. They always look so ominous, right? These are the twins. They're affectionately called. Uh, if you can tell on the logo, this is an original Intel Pentium Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, each of them have two Pentium Pro processors at 200 whopping megahertz with one meg of cache each. Now, a lot of people don't realize that um, in this whole meg propaganda for level 2 caches that we've had large level 2 caches for a while. This was built back in 1996 <coughs> for a small business. Uh, here's the drive, hot swappable drives. Uh, there's six SCSI drives that can go in here. And if I don't make you sick by trying to pull one out, it's hung on something. They weren't too hot swappable. <laughs> you definitely couldn't do it while the system was live. This is an IBM 4 gig drive, original manufacturer. <coughs> And I think this is in a RAID <coughs> 1, so I can get them. It may be even a RAID 0. This system, Joey, he's been a bitch. Uh, he has been very cooperative, so he's down right now. Um, but his twin, Joy, is currently a web server and FTP server running. What could run on such old hardware with only 320 meg? and an old IBM serve rate that only gets maybe half a meg per second transfer rates to the disk? Gentoo! And it is not a laughable web server. She's very nice at serving up pages. Uh, that 320 meg also is the EDO memory. Uh, if you want to see the inside of something similar to her, here's the little orphan that I took apart and raped. She's an IBM 325, a smaller version. On the inside you can see the different fans. These come with three fans. And the uh, EISA extension uh, slots, expansion slots next to the beige colored PCI ones. For comparison of the, the processor size we're talking about here, here is a CD-ROM and there you can see the large Pentium Pro processor marked bad because it overheated. Yes, I was very bad that day. I left the heat sink off of it, and even at 200 megahertz, it fried. So anyway, there's a size comparison. Uh, the, even the Pentium 2, and I believe the Pentium 3, are much smaller than this die size. So that's the internals of one. Always good to have uh, scraps around for, you know, when they crash. So that's the little scrap yard there. Next in line is the all-powerful, very loud Dell Power Edge. That's two intake fans that you hear and two outtake fans. Those are those large, like, four-inch in diameter fans. She's running uh, Windows 2000 for my testing purposes um, and for serving up files because she's got the largest disk capacity. These are six SCSI drives attached to a PERC2 RAID controller that's got 16 meg of read-write uh, memory on board with a battery backup so that if she does indeed crash with the UPS she can still flush everything from the disks. 
Uh, I'm not going to pull these out, but these are also hot swappable. Um, it's just that back in the day, you you know, like I said, couldn't just yank discs out. Um, next in line is a Compact ProLiant 1600. Uh, this is actually identical to the Power Edge in its configuration. It's got two Pentium 2 processors with 512 meg uh, cache. This has got 350 megahertz processors. The Power Edge has got 300 megahertz processors. So it's got a very similar um, RAID controller. It's a Compact 2. Uh, it's fast 20 SCSI, so you're going to get uh, maximum throughput of about 10 megabits per second. But the actual throughput that I've noticed um, on these two systems with a, a file system, uh, of course NTFS is a bit different than Extended 3 uh, with journaling, but it's about 1.5 to 2 meg per second transfer rates. If you know a way to really blow that up, then let me know. But I'm not too concerned about speed on disk subsystems because, um, well, I've got all the time in the world. This is a backup server, uh, and it's going to spit out a little tape here. Believe it or not, this little old thing is a DDS3 that can hold 24 gig of data when compressed. Um, there's a size comparison for you. So besides being a backup server, uh, backing up stuff um, on these five disks, um, it's also uh, for VoIP testing and running an asterisk server. It's running CentOS 4.5. And right here is the most unique of all of them, and because of that, maybe I had to buy it, maybe not, but it, it wasn't necessarily cheap just because it's old. It was built in 1998, I believe. This is a Sun Ultra 30. It's got an Ultra 2 Spark running at 300 megahertz. No, I take that back, 250 megahertz. Um, with uh, also a 1 meg level 2 cache, like the IBMs down below. The difference is, this is a 64-bit processor. And in this hoopla day of everyone on, talking about their desktop machines having 64-bit cores, you're talking about a decade-old workstation that is still probably the most responsive of all these old ones. Uh, because of its responsiveness, I, I use it as a uh, as running Postgres with Solaris 9. Um, but occasionally I still pop on the CDE um, and or GNOME uh, window manager. Here's the original Sun keyboard that came with it. It's got the infamous power on, power off button and the very practical three button Unix mouse. I don't, I don't know why all mice are not made like this, but I guess with the scroll bar that came back into popularity. Uh, and then for console access, I typically use the much louder original IBM keyboard if anyone's got an IBM mouse to replace this generic one, I would be so indebted to you. So there we have you. Uh, all of the systems um, up and running, different things. And yeah, so it's a little honeypot. Come and hack me. <laughs> and maybe I'll get some feedback from other people. All right, bye-bye.